there's compliance, there's law, there's regulatory stuff, there's taxes, there's like not an infinite well of money at all times. And so you have to kind of be the one who's like, no, yeah, a lot. Yeah. You know, so CEOs either like drive the ball forward in like a massive way, um, or they're there to make sure that the, the wheels don't fall off. Ex Special Forces sniper turned entrepreneur. I've scaled numerous businesses to eight figures. My name is Mad Rider. This is my podcast, and I'm telling you to put that coffee down. down. Hello. Hello, Patrice. Good to be back. Begin. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome to another episode of Coffee is for Closers. We're back in the new and improved studio. Yeah, well, we're just facing the other way. <laughs> <laughs> it's an all new studio. It's a $10 million studio. The yeah. same as Coffeezilla's. Yeah. Um, we, we moved into a skyscraper. Yeah. I bought it. None of that happened. We are just facing the other way and I put a couch. Yeah. Let's uh, change the school to holiday. Why not? Mixing things up. We're having another go at it. Yeah. Uh, what's so You've had a lot going on. A little bit. Tell We're going to talk about all of that. Yeah. All the dirty goss. Okay. Probably not too much because I'm legally obligated. Yeah. I was going to say, how much, how much of this can we get a hook? I'm going to give you all the juicy secrets about why I left 7th level and all the nasty business. <laughs> okay. But not really. That's the hook. Yeah. Right? Clickbait. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm out. Yeah. Totally out. So yeah. we, last time we were in here, you were telling me about how 7th uh, level's full steam ahead. Everything's churning there. South Sniper's taken a back seat. Yeah. Turns out I was wrong. Yeah, we've done a full 180. That's why everybody's been so busy. There's We had planned to start trying to do this properly again. And yeah. That just was not on the cards. I had to make money. Yeah. So what yeah. happened? Tell us Tell us what you can. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't really care. I'll always sort of tell the truth. I'll leave out some things, but like, you know, for the most part. I just sort of, um, you know, you know, I think that there's like a, the average life run of a CEO is like two years. That's okay. about the average. I think the reason for that being is one, it's like not a super pleasant job, you know, like when you're doing it, there's like not pretendy, you know, when you're actually doing it. And so I think you start to, what, like, what do you mean by that? You mean like the hard decision making part of that? Is that what you mean in the yeah. not pretendies? Like you've got to upset people. Is yeah. That what you mean? Or? Yeah. Well, it's just like, you don't have any peers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can have, yeah, I had two business partners, but like you sort of have to manage relationships and you have to like, you know, you have to f play the role that you're there to fulfill, mm -hmm. which is like the one who's like, I guess for lack of a better term, like the adult in the room, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's ambitious and smart and wants to do certain things. And it's like, you're the one who has to kind of go like, yeah, but there's compliance, there's law, there's mm -hmm. regulatory stuff, there's taxes, there's like not an infinite well of money at all times. And so you have to kind of be the one who's like, no, yeah, a lot. Yeah. You know, so CEOs either like drive the ball forward in like a massive way. Um, or they're there to make sure that the, the wheels don't fall off, you know, and like there's there's two roles there. I've done both of them. The one where you're driving the ball forward is way more fun. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, you know, it sort of got to a point where I think I'd just done it for long enough. And I was like, I mean, it's just not like a fun job anymore. And I don't think personality wise, I'm the guy to do that in the long term. In the long term, I think like I could come in and grow stuff. And then sort of like deuces I'm out mm -hmm. because it, it is like it's a it's a different type of person I think that could take a company that's sort of going pretty well and like keep the wheel moving forward for like a long period of time and there's just tons of stuff that I don't know mm -hmm. you know like um, you, you know you sort of learn all these new things every day uh, like I've got a new project that I'm doing which I'll talk about in a second but I started learning about the FCC which is like the Federal Communications Commission, which is all around the telesales rules. Okay. You know, turns out you That's can't do thing. any of the stuff we were doing. Right. Triple dialing. Can't do it. Triple dialing. Yeah, so like dial, dial, dial to yeah. get someone to pick up, right? You can't do that. Um, you can't call someone more than seven times in seven days. Every state is different. So like in Florida, if you call someone after 8 p.m., it's a crime. Really? Yeah, it's a crime. On Sundays, you can't call anyone in the U.S. How does that work in regards to if you're not in Florida, but you call someone? It doesn't matter. It, it, the, the crazy thing is it doesn't even matter if their phone prefix is in Florida. Right. If they're in Florida at the time. Okay. <laughs> so they're on holiday. You have no idea. It's me. Yeah. I, I'm on my Australian number. Yeah. I'm in Florida. You call me on the weekend. You go to jail, motherfucker. 
Pretty. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, like if it's a, if, if it's a telemarketing call, yeah, it is or telesales. You know, so like they're you know, it's probably not jail, but like yeah, the yeah. thing is. Like you can't hide from it. Yeah, yeah. Because the telcos monitor everything. And so As Snowden told us. Yeah. But like it's all algorithmically tracked because the way that it works is like there's like a telco and then there's an analytics company that sits over the top which is independent. Okay. And so that analytics company monitors every in and out and every action on behalf of the dialer and the person picking up. Mm -hmm. And so if someone gets gone, ugh, and, 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 and all the time, it's like, well, that's odd. That's coming from that number. So it starts to go, well, that's a spam. Right. How many times are they calling? How many, you know what I mean? And then it starts to sort of like algorithmically limit. Mm -hmm. Put your, it together. The your, picture. your sort of pickup yeah. rates. Yeah. And so there's a lot of other things, and I'll go into that in a minute, but like, you know, you sort of just learn tons of new stuff. And so I was just like, man, like, I feel like you kind of need someone who's been to 100 million you know like you can only like sort of uh path find for so long before you need someone who's like oi come this way mm -hmm. you know and like n we didn't i didn't have anyone that could do that because like again it's different again if you're you know say like kim right brilliant genius guy but again like dealing with huge huge companies for the most part that 30 40 million to 100 million i'm sure is a very unique journey mm -hmm. and in the same way from zero to 30 is you know what i mean so it's sort of like it's difficult to find people that could like give you the appropriate things for the appropriate time you know because you can overcook a business to where it's like just this huge monstrosity of a thing and mm -hmm. it's just like unprofitable mm -hmm. and you can undercook it to where it's just like a teeming cesspool of sales and marketing and nothing else mm -hmm. And it's like hard to play the balancing game, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And if you don't know what's around the corner, it's sort of like you have to be a little bit trepidatious, which like isn't ideal if you're trying to grow. So I was like, all those things, plus like I think just differences of opinions. Yeah. You know, and like I'm such a forceful character, I suppose, <laughs> right? That um, like, it, like if I'm there and like not in charge, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So, like, because the original plan was, like, I'll step down, Marco can become CEO, and then I'll be on the board and do a different division. But it's like, well, if that is actually done properly, like, what are they going to tell me what to do? Mm. You know? It's good luck with that, man. I've told people I was in the army. I've never had a boss. <laughs> Not someone I truly consider a boss. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like ask, ask, ask Jace. <laughs> He was my I boss. Can, I can attest to that. Yeah. Like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Full respect to them, but, like, I just don't see it that way for some whatever reason, for better or for worse. But um, I think knowing that about myself, I was just like, ah, oh, I just don't see that going well. Okay. And I was on one board meeting, and I was like, oh, I should, I, no, I'm done. I'm out completely. So you're out of seventh level. I've no. Polis, no. polis, totally. I don't even have an email. Got nothing to do. I mean, I didn't know that was going to happen, but. <laughs> A day's notice would have been handy. But, <laughs> hey man, G Suite's not, not cheap. Yeah. You know what I mean? $22 a month per person. For realsies. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. I had to call my bank and make a few emergency phone calls. <laughs> but anyway, it's all good. Um, so, totally out of seventh level, firing back up Sales Sniper. So, as we, I think we discussed it last time, that Sales Sniper has been sort of not dormant, it's working. It's just at a much reduced sort of skeleton stuff, yeah. just doing the four or five clients that you had. I think it was like three. Yeah, and yeah. Then you just had the processes in place, ticking those yeah. guys over, everything is running well for them. Yeah. But now you're bringing everybody back in, spooling the whole thing back up. Yeah, so we started doing that, I would say like first of March is sort of when I really sort of stepped back in and properly. Mm -hmm. um, I signed up like six accounts. Mm -hmm. Six accounts pretty quick. Um, the goal is to only have six, so okay. we we'll probably have like eight with two in the pipeline. So that'll give us 10, which will give me a good, like 90 day filling out period to yeah. be able to be like, oh yeah, these are the ones that we should keep. And then I've just got a couple of other like projects on the go with different things that we're doing. But the goal with Sniper is like, I figured out how to run it this time. Like I know the mistakes that I've made in the past and, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, like, I mean, the business is a great business. Like, I mean, I didn't look at it for two years and never made less than, you know, 300K a month. Right. Just sort of like... Yeah. 
diddly bopping along. The only issue was like it just was housing a lot of stuff that wasn't it. So it was seventh level stuff, but it was acting as like the Australian employee holder, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so and how's that affecting you as much as you can talk about in that a lot of the staff that you had in South Sniper ended up migrating over to seventh level. Yeah. And so are they staying there? They're coming back across. Yeah, no, I, I just like, I, I took people like ask me, what should I do? I said, oh, I still don't best for you. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. you know, whatever. So you're not poaching people out of it. It's that you're spinning nah. back up and they're free to do whatever they want. Yeah, I couldn't give a fuck. Like, yeah. like, you know, like there's so many people on the planet, you know, finding people to do stuff isn't that difficult. You know, like I did one post on Facebook. I had 101 submissions for sales reps. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, just, I'm sure of which 97 of which are garbage. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? need a few. Like, yeah, I need a few. Yeah. You know? So, um, and I've got like a really good SDR system, which is like the outbounders. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a, a, I hooked up with this team in like Africa and like in like Ethiopia. And so we're, we've partnered and um, man, I've got like nine or 10 of them, I think so far. And I've probably placed like eight or nine more. Mm-hmm. No, even more. I've probably placed like 15 more. Yeah, right. Um, and they're awesome. Like, yeah, sweet. incredible. Like they just absolutely go for it i messed with all the levels before so it should be yeah okay sweet um so yeah so that's going really well i'm happy with that and then that's going to go into the next venture which is the sdr call center okay so tell me about that i don't know anything about that yeah no so i had the, i've had the idea for a long time mm-hmm. which is like sdrs are like a really tough one because what does sdr stand for so sales development rep same okay. as an isr which is like a just an outbounder yeah someone who helps so those booking your calls yeah or just even selling low ticket products or whatever. But generally speaking, the way that it's done at the moment is like, it's sort of like a newbie sales rep. Okay. The problem with that is that like, they're kind of like the first point of contact mm-hmm. that people have with the business. And so to have that be like a newbie is kind of an issue. And they're like a top of funnel activity. So the more effective they are, the more successful the business is by a long shot. Like even like a really good quality SDR can have a greater impact on the business than a really good like closer can Mm -hmm. because they can produce way more. Like a good SDR will produce like 25% lead to schedule. So if you give them 500 leads, they give you like 125 sales calls back. Mm -hmm. Those leads might only cost you seven or eight bucks a lead. Mm -hmm. So they're like producing you a metric boatload of opportunity and then it's up for the guys to close them, you know? Mm-hmm. But if you had like a team of savage SDRs, like it's better than having a team of savage closers because okay. you just have way more opportunity. Okay. And you're like not relying on booked calls from marketing, which is really difficult and it like is really hard to crack and mm-hmm. to, to, like to do it cheaply. So talk to me like I'm an idiot on this. Uh, the SDR crew, they're going after people who you've already got. Like they're people just who like name you a phone number. Yeah, and you've already got that through one way or another. Yeah. You've ended up with that. Give that to those guys and then say, hey, book me calls off of these guys. Yeah. And when you say coming in through marketing, they're new leads that are coming in. Yeah, or sometimes they're older. Yeah, I mean, but like, I mean, uh, so like it might be no shows, no sales, cancellations, reschedules, mm-hmm. um, or people that, you know, uh, you know, 90 days ago opted in for something, but for whatever reason, it just they just didn't get them a call or mm-hmm. some shit like that. We're not doing like really, really old leads just because like, the numbers kind of blow out on those. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, like, there's a lot of regulations happening at the moment in the insurance industry to stop the age leads business because in the insurance, they'll, they'll sell three-year-old leads. Right. Which is, like, it's not great for, like, the person getting those calls. Mm-hmm. You know, like, they're being called constantly for three years because they bought a house. Yeah, yeah. More restriction, more restriction, you know, like, all this kind of shit. So they just get hounded. And the leads will be sold 70, 80 times. Yeah. Like, what a, what a business model, though. Just, yeah, selling like, leads. It's just crazy. But so, um, like that. So that, that's the model. And so, generally speaking, it's like twenty-year-olds, you know, that don't that see that role as a pass-through, mm-hmm. as a way to get opportunity. But you're not really learning how to sell, you know. And like this, and like they they usually don't try very hard because they're just fucking lazy, man. Right. You know. They think like two hundred dollars a day is a lot. It's like man, it's an auto dollar. Does dollars four dollars a minute? Mm-hmm. Like, what are you? What do you, What do you mean? Like, you worked for yeah. You worked for conversations is a lot of conversations. Yeah, two hundred dollars is not a lot. No, yeah. exactly. So, you know, they only ever worked like to be honest, mate. Like a lot of SDRs, I reckon you could boil them down to ninety minutes a day on average, like of actual work, and they want a base and they get a commission mm-hmm. because and technically SDRs should probably be employees. Mm-hmm. 
if you really sort of want to break it down, if you have like a US-based company and a US-based SDR, you're telling that person what to do, when to do it, and you're giving them company tools, that ticks every fucking box for an employee. Mm -hmm. So the Department of Labor is not going to be happy with you paying them as a contractor mm -hmm. on comms only or on base plus comms. So really, you should have them as an employee. And then, which is going to be paid time off, you've got benefits most likely, a whole host of other things. So you're probably going to, re reality, that person's base is 60K. Mm -hmm. You know, once you're all in, and then you got to pay them comms on top. And they're really not very effective for the most part. And it's very hard to hold them accountable. And the systems that they use, like the system that we used at 7th was close. It's just not meant for it. Like, so you end up dying. What happens is like your pickup rates get lower and lower mm -hmm. because it keeps getting flagged. And the industry as a standard, the SOP for that is to rotate out the numbers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. How come? Because the telcos, it's all coming from the same place. Yeah, yeah. Like you're just spoofing numbers essentially one hub with a bunch of different numbers and you're just rotating through them like mate who, like who like who are you fooling mm -hmm. you know and i thought that was the way to do it until i actually looked into it i was like oh i'd love to do this call center idea because like it was my frustration at seven it was like i just don't i like the guys in the department but the department itself is just very expensive there's a lot of bases there's a management team. There's a whole thing that goes around it. And I was like, I just don't see the fucking ROI. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have it, then it's like you have to really drop your lead flow or figure something else out, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, I'd love to do this. But then I just started having a look at like software solutions and nothing did it until you go to like the enormous softwares where you have like a 500 to 1,000 seat minimum. Right. And I was like, oh, what can they do? And I was like, oh, they can do everything. And so, and they have all the FCC and FTC rules built into the software. So you right. can't break them. Right. You know, like, yeah, you want to dial someone 10 times. It just won't let you. Yeah. They're just not, sorry, mate, you're done. You know, and then one of the big So these are the systems that much bigger companies. Like, you have to be huge, though. Yeah. To have a thousand people need right. to use yeah. it. I had to sign up to a contract. That was, I negotiated down to 300 seats. Right. And you struggled to use those, right? I already not figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I'll be all right. I think I'll be able to get up to there in like five months. Yeah. Yeah. So where's all this going to be based? Uh, well, I mean, the company's based here. Yeah. Um, the software is obviously software. Yeah. Right. And then the outbounders would be predominantly in Ethiopia. And then uh, most of the clients will be in the US. Right. Fair few layers. Well, <laughs> yeah. A couple of the corporate layers going on there. Okay, so, and this is going to be servicing like new clients here at Sales Sniper. I mean, they'll, yes, because like, the, like, so right now, like I said, the model is like essentially people get SDRs placed from different companies, mm -hmm. but they're all just like very bad sales reps. Right. For the most part. Um, and then if you get someone who's good, they like they're not going to stay mm -hmm. and because they're good you don't want to promote them mm -hmm. you know because they're doing really well yeah so and like trapped. yeah so you're trapped exactly and, and you know i was speaking to one the other day that used to work for me and uh, like after i left seventh and he was like yeah i was just sort of told you know that no and so he left and i was mm -hmm. like yeah that's fair enough man and i see it from both sides i think it's both conversations are fair enough yeah yeah for sure you know so you just sort of left but so your plan then is to to specially train a bunch of SDR people yeah. and have them really high end, um, good at doing that, but without a view to becoming sales reps or something like that. Like have them like yeah. this is my job and this is what I want but to continue me, to be good. But they don't hire anyone; they just hire the company. Explain that to me. Well, they could have twenty people on their account, or they could have one. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter, and they're just going to pay by the hour. Mm -hmm. 20 bucks an hour, $5 a booking. Yeah, right. That's it. And then that then just feeds into either if they're a client here or into their own system, right? Like to their own closes. So they just give us the booking list. Right. Give us where you want us to send them. Mm -hmm. Hand us, the, give us the leads. We'll have like a port and it's a data compliant port. Mm -hmm. So if there is like financial information, I don't know if anyone knows that there, but if you have someone's income, on a type form or something, 
and, and you port that data using Zapier, you're breaking a few different laws. Yeah, right. But yeah, yeah. Um, same as like someone's weight. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. If you have someone's weight on like a Google sheet, name, phone number, email, weight, like that's health. Yeah. You know, when you actually look into it, it's like, oh, yeah, everyone's breaking the law. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, yeah, like, obviously you've got to be okay with like, well, you can't fucking do everything perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, I'll be like the only compliant solution. Mm hmm. Yeah. And like, you know, it's like with the regulators coming down on the industry, I feel like it's a good place to be. And with the way that SDRs are done, like no one is happy. T tell me more about that. When you say regulators coming down on the industry, like that's something that you just kind of say, like it just gets thrown out. Yeah. But like in reality, what what is that for real? And hang on, I've got a cough. Yeah. <coughs> so every industry goes through a part where like it's a new, like coaching itself, right? It's pretty new. I mean, it's been around for a long time, but it's sort of like in COVID hit this huge boom. Yeah. Right. We're like, you know, and then so boom time happens. Right, early adapters make a shitload of money. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm one of them. Like, fantastic. One yeah. of the OGs in 20 years, but I'm back in my day, you said, yeah. plug you want it. You know, then there'll be, a, there'll be an AI FTC on every single call at some point, fucking mm -hmm. muting people. But, um, and then from there, like regulators step in and they go, all right, cowboys, calm the fuck down. Yeah. They take a few big actors and they smack the living bejesus out of them. And has that happened? Yeah. yeah. To who? Like, yeah. Give... Uh, well, Taylor got done. Yeah. Um, uh, and then Annex and Gall. There's another one that got done. Um, and what, what happened in those cases? Like, what did they get done for? Uh, picture stuff or, like... I mean, Taylor's was, was, was big. I mean, the, the first really big one was probably Kevin David. Yeah. What yeah. happened with him? I mean, he got $52 million Oof. worth of fine. So the way that they do it is basically they take all your money. Yeah. So you get fined this huge amount, then they settle for everything you have. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's brutal. Yeah. And, like... So they look and go, you're probably worth 30 million. You're hiding some somewhere that we won't be able to find. Yeah, no, but if they if they ever find it. Yeah, but so we'll, we'll sting you with a $52 million fine. Yeah, basically they, they pull all that every stuff single out. dollar he made in his business, they made him give back to clients. Wow. Now you obviously can't do that. Yeah, yeah. People are like, where'd the 52 million go? It's like, well, mate, there's expenses. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Lambos aren't cheap. Yeah. And he had two, yeah. you know. Actually, one of the things that I spoke to Taylor about it, um, Taylor's really open because sort of I felt really sorry for Taylor because like he probably didn't de deserve to be done. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like some of their marketing was a little bit sort of how's your father out there, but I don't think it was any more egregious than anybody else. Uh -huh. But he was like being impersonated by somebody and that's what did it. Wow. So that person is a real piece of shit. Uh, his Someone name, you know. And his name is Mike. Right. Um, and um, So he knows that. Oh, yeah, I told him he was a piece of shit straight to his face. Okay. I saw him. Like, so he worked for him or something? Like, no, nah, he's just a dude. Runs a fucking scam. This guy called... His name is Mike, and he ran a business called LimeWire, which is a fucking scam, and he's a piece of shit. LimeWire. LimeWire. Yeah, so it was like a... It was like an MLM sales training. So basically, he was like, hey, I'll sales train you, and I'll guarantee you a 5K offer. The sales training is 5K. Can you guess what the offer is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? But mate, like, so I, I, I got onto it because like they were farming the closing code group. This is a few years ago. And it was like a 15 year old Nigerian kid. I was, and he started messaging me. So I went down the rabbit hole and then I put him onto James and James went through the full sales process. Mm -hmm. And then was like, hey man, you know this isn't a, like this is a pyramid scheme, right? And he sort of told him through and he was like, oh shit, and this poor fucking kid, mate. He's like leverage his world to get this 5k sold the fucking dream total bullshit right and um like and then it just be like mike uh the limewire whole thing just like sort of just spread like a fucking virus amongst all these like 15 16 year olds and i'm sure other people and at least i'm sure there were some guys that meant well in it, you know, yeah, right? yeah but it was a bit of a pyramid scheme and then they sort of started uh, uh, imitating like Sales Mentor, which is the sales arm of Traffic and Funnels, like the which is Taylor's company. There's Traffic and Funnels, which is like business coaching and marketing, and there's like Sales Mentor, which is the sales stuff. And I did the course; it's pretty good. Um, and um, I mean, Taylor have a good relationship. Like I spoke to him, like I did a, I was chatting while I was having breakfast, like yesterday. And so that sort of got tipped off about all these pissed off people started complaining to the FTC about sales mentor but it actually wasn't him yeah right. it was okay. this other guy and then from there like that's what tipped him off and then it took him like a year to convince him that he wasn't him and then they're like well while we're here we'll just go for a look around yeah go for a look around and the funny thing was like this is what he told me he was like um 
he was like, well, like we've recorded, they had like every sales call recorded and stuff like that. And they were like, you know, we're above this and we've done all this. And they're like, sweet, send us all your sales calls. He's like, well, there's 40,000 of them. And they go, send them all. Like that. And so they went to like every sales call, all this and that. They had to prove every single testimonial, but they did it. Like, because they were actually good at what they did. Mm. Um, they probably grew too quickly, but um, he's quite young. He's like 27 or something like that. Just like a big company to run for, this, for the age that he was. I did a podcast with him, talked all about it. But yeah, so he got done. Um, but he's okay. Like, he's fine. Um, but like, they froze assets and it's the whole thing, man. Like, it's a big fucking deal, like a very stressful time. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, Anik is another very good actor. Like, there was like no complaint. It was weird. He had like no complaints. He had like no real chargebacks, refunds. It was like someone's cousin at the FTC. Like, went w- whatever right like for real and he walked into the fcc building and like some of the dudes who were there started taking photos with him they're like oh my god it's Anik. like harry i love your stuff like it's so good and they're like what are you here for and i was like man i'm being done what are you talking about and that was like the actual ftc like employees yeah right it's crazy and so he had all of his sales calls rated on like a compliance level like he took it seriously and he's like, yeah, so we rate all of our sales calls in compliance of one to five. And they go, which one's better? They go, five. They go, send us all the ones. <laughs> That's what they said. Just said the other way around. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, like they, and they just follow the money, you know? Yeah. And like, it's designed to fuck over bad people. Yeah. Like bad actors. The problem is like, it's just very hard to tell. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like marketing is marketing, mm-hmm. you know, but there's things like you can't stand in front of a fancy car. Why? Explain it's, that. It's because it's the implication is that if you do what I say, you can have one. Yeah, okay. It's called a, um, what's it called? Like a fucking intent. I can't remember the name of it, but there's like a specific name for it where it's like, it's an implication. Yeah. You know? And and so like, there's just all these rules and it's just like, what a fascinating so, world. So fatality go down, like what did, like, what actually did he do like what was it was the... so ftc is marketing it's marketing and sales practices okay. basically like um they don't want there it, it's i think i think it's a net positive like but i think that the way they go about it is probably not correct and it's because like they don't feel that the new age marketers are real marketers like the lady who runs it is like 70 mm-hmm. you know it's like if you didn't go to harvard and study marketing then you like mm-hmm. the you know, using magazine ads yeah, and like you know, if you if you don't have a business degree, like you have no you have no business talking about it, mm-hmm. you know, which like whatever, and that administration will probably turn over, mm-hmm. you know, um, every single time they go to the Supreme Court, they lose, like they do not act in a legal way. The FTC. Yeah, they're bullies. Right. A lot of the time, if you do fight them, you will probably win, but it will cost you ten million dollars to do it, and, yeah. you, and you can't trade. Yeah, okay. They tie you up for that period. Oh, they tie you up. So, like, they freeze all your personal accounts and your business bank accounts. So, how are you supposed to fight? Yeah. There's a lot of power. Yeah, it's a lot. And they freeze you before they... um, So, they freeze you at the beginning of the investigation. Wow. With no notice. Like, I I remember I looked at this one trial, and it was like the mother had her... The guy's mother had her accounts frozen. And like no telling, she just went to the shops and couldn't buy anything. Yeah, she was like eighty-two. Yeah, and it's because he'd been paying. He'd paid his mom fifty grand, like a couple of years before. Yeah, and it was like, oh well, that's money. That's like you're siphoning money to your family. We'll freeze them too. So it's crazy, man. And the and the ACCC acts as like a, an arm for them. Right. So, so the A A Triple C is in Australia is right. Yeah, Matthew Lloyd was like the big one. That was the guy. He ran a one called um, Wealth fucking masters or whatever it was okay we know someone who was pretty heavily involved in it yeah tell me about that yeah well what's up with that we know someone yeah as in i do uh you've definitely seen many videos um (laughs) right right, okay right um and matt they 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 were doing like a well over 100 million and it was like a series of events that they would sell but i don't really know a lot about it but i know it was very very lucrative and very very high profit yeah and that when he got done like he had a private island yeah okay right right and it was like, that was a huge takedown. Huge monstrous takedown. That was like one of the biggest ones the FTC had ever done. Okay. But like every Fortune 100 company has been done. Yeah. Like there's not a single big, big company that hasn't been done by the FTC. In one way or another. It's almost just like a way for them to get revenue. Yeah. Like, because they just know, there's no point trying to fight them. Well, and it's if, such an arduous process. if their laws are so um, complex, 
he and can't. So numerous, you can't possibly get it. No, right. you really, you really can't. Yeah. And they change all the time. So like, there's just no way to stay up to date with it. Even if you have a full time compliance officer, like, you, you know, when you're a big company and you have a lot of marketing going on, like the amount of administrative drag down that you would have just checking things, yeah. it would be, it would be inc- like it's just it's not worth it. Like you're better off just doing the best you can. Mm-hmm. And I think like that should be reasonable. Yeah. Whether they consider it to be or not, you know, I think that the it's there to protect, you know, dumb people from being scammed by smart people. And yeah, that's of not, course. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. You know, um, but it's not like you know people are out there trying to sell the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but well, it is, there there is an element are. of it. I mean, yeah. I um, I've I've said it on this podcast before, and I got done by uh, the FTX. And I had crypto on yeah, FTX. Yeah. I got big mad about that because I was like, "These are nerds that stole ones and zeros from me." Yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like I, I that Sam Bankman Fried or whatever. Like, yeah. put me and him in a room it is a very different conversation that's happening yeah, yeah. there. But when it's ones and zeros at the distance, I don't understand any of that shit. And he did, he, and he got me. And so yeah. I'm like, I'm very happy with people checking and making sure yeah. that dummies like me don't get ripped off by it. Yeah, I guess the dummy thing is all a, it's all relative, right? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. again, I know nothing about crypto. Yeah, well, I know I, how to lose it. Yeah, <laughs> fucking hell, I'm the best at losing it. I might, I might beat you. Uh, I think. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in volume lost, perhaps you beat. Yeah, me, yeah. But ability to lose, ability to I'm lose. the guy. Yeah, I, I, and it's back now, and it just makes me want to get in. But like, no, no, I'm out. I'm out for sure. I'm out. I had like two Bitcoin. I sold it for a loss. I should have just kept it. Yep. I I can't even remember what I had, but it's gone. I. The whole platform score. Oh, mine all got lost in Anchor. Yeah. <sighs> I think I had some of that, didn't I? For Anchor. <laughs> it was supposed to be like the safest thing on the on, on crypto. Yeah. And it just and it was two billionaires arguing. And that's what did it. That was the bullshit thing. It was like just Yeah. Like it was just a bullshit argument between two guys and one guy had more power and just was like, I know what I'll do. I'll fuck all everyone around. Yeah, I'll see. For fun. Yeah, and I I'll think just, you and thousands and thousands. Yeah, of I had one hundred and fifty thousand US. Yeah, in it, you know. But oh well, easy come, easy go. Uh, so back on track. That that compliance thing is obviously a big thing on your mind presently, and so everything that within your power now going forward is like you're paying obviously paying a lot of attention to that. Yeah, I just want to be. I just want to like. Um, I think that there's it's not to, all your money taken from you. Yeah, but I think like I think that there's ways to do things properly. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, the industry is at a time where it's going to have to figure that out, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so I think if I can find something like I've, this, this solution that I've got for dialing and this, like this, I think the SDR whole thing is a problem anyway in the whole industry. I just don't think it's very productive for the SDR for the business. Like it's just a, everyone's angry about it all the time. Mm-hmm. Like it's the only thing, it's the main problem that I hear people bitching about, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, I think I can solve that. And so I'm going to try it it's like it's a bit risky because it's quite expensive um you know to set up well i had to agree to like a fifty thousand dollar a month three-year contract wow okay you know so it's like all right that's that's a start and you have to agree to it like before you build it yeah so i'm like okay and so that is the software that the SDS will be using yeah and like they won't decide a thing Mm-hmm. Like they will just log in and go and go and they won't decide a person to dial. They won't decide a list. They will have no control over what happens. Everything will be done as per how I design it. Mm-hmm. So like if you if you come to me and go, hey, man, I want you to call my leads. I can go quit. How how fast of a speed to lead do you want? You can go four minutes. I go, okay. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. And, cool. it, and if you go to me and go, hey, like who are the people who are booking in? I go, well, the average person booking in is Georgia. Mm-hmm. And your pickup rates are highest in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. You'll have all that data. Yeah. Yeah. And I can, uh, every second, and you and I can just go to you, well, how fast do you want the 100 hours to go? And and who are your uh, clients that you're looking at for that? So I've already got a bit of a wait list because um, I've been in touch. Like, So Taylor is going to be Taylor's new company, um, which is actually really cool, it's sort of like, He's sort of, um, it's funny, he, in, his, in his ads, he like says little things that he can't say. It's quite, it's quite clever. He's like, because he's quite knowledgeable on all the FTC stuff, obviously. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, but it's good to see that like you can be really 
compliant and still be quite successful. Yeah. And he's got this new business called like the Wealthy Consultant. So he'll be one of the first clients. Cool. Um, we've got, and then I've got like a, about 25 businesses. Right. Okay. Are going to like, are sort of pretty interested. And then I've got like, so they're in the pipe waiting for you to set this up. Yeah, so it's being built, but it takes like, you know, nine to 12 weeks to build it, right? So yeah. um, I've got a meeting with the software company tomorrow to sort of... Where are they? Uh, they're in the US. They're in a US-based... But they're, they're huge. They're, I mean, they're a global, yeah. monstrous global company. Um, and they're just a really good level solution. And they sort of explained to me why all the stuff that I was doing. Because I was like, these are my frustrations. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And they just explained to me why... Well, everything I was doing would never do anything. And I was like, um, oh, it makes sense. No wonder it kept getting worse. And so you reckon in the sort of coaching consulting space, there's nobody, you're the, probably the first one taking the step out to this sort of Well, there are people solution. doing call centers, but they're f pretend. Right. Because. So what do you mean by that? Well, they're Explain using that. like the off the shelf dialing solutions that everybody uses. Mm -hmm. And that's so. What's the difference? What's it? What, what makes it? A, what makes a call center like? No, this is a real one. This is a real call center. It's the ability to negotiate with the telcos. Right. Explain that to me. Well, if you get flagged, you have to be unflagged. Yeah. The only way to be unflagged is to have pull with the telcos and the data companies. Right. And like the company that I'm going with, they just call them. Right. And they said it's about a three day turnaround. From the, time, from the time you get flagged, right, and then you'll be unflagged, and then you have a point zero one percent of chance of ever getting flagged again. Wow, nice. Because the the thing that the the data companies they can't tell if you are scraping and buying leads mm -hmm. or if you're actually producing inbound. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing inbound. So I, I'm allowed to call these people. Yeah, they don't know that. Yeah. And so this software provides the evidence to them through the companies that make the software. You yeah, can then go like there's, su there's such a large conglomerate. Like they're huge, right? right? They have like millions and millions and millions of phone numbers. And they would produce a ton of money for these telcos. Yeah. And, you know, and they're like probably one of the front line, I would say, analytics that give the telcos, you know, like data and stuff like that. And so um, they just go, yeah, yeah, we just call. Yeah. I was like, oh, sweet. Fuck. That's like, okay. And when you say you get flagged, is that the operation as a whole or a single number? It's a single number, but then, like, it happens yeah. again. Yeah. And then it happens again. And then they just go, oh, where's that coming from? And they go from there. And they go, sweet, just flag the account. Yeah. And then everyone's using Twilio. What's that? Yeah, so Twilio is, like, where most of the CRMs get their numbers. Right. So the moment you're buying a number from Twilio, whereas we buy our, we're going to buy our numbers direct from AT&T, mm -hmm. you know, whereas everyone else uses Twilio. Right. So Twilio automatically is like the VoIP number place. Right. Whereas like ours will be actual real life goddamn freedom loving US phone numbers. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um actual phone numbers. Yeah, and it'll have like local area recognition, so we'll have like multiple phone numbers for every area code. Mm -hmm. You know, and we'll dial to those area codes, which means we'll have higher pickup rates and contact rates. And you're actually allowed to do like predictive dialing, whereas you're not really allowed to do it in other softwares because like it's just not compliant unless you do it in a very particular way, mm -hmm. which means you call like all the numbers at once and whoever picks up gets right. routed to an agent. But you, re you can do that if you have a lot of agents. Mm -hmm. So like I've got 300 that are sitting there being trained right now. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to introduce them one at a time. But like, you know, I'll probably put 50 on straight away. Mm hmm you know, and just go like, all right, let's go. Yeah. And then, you know, sort of they'll get, so they'll just have things pop up. The script pops up. Everything pops up about what they're selling and who they're selling to. They'll be segmented to maybe one to two different kind of businesses or depending on the volume, maybe three different businesses. Some will have their own dedicated, like, teams if they're, like, high volume enough, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, like, I, like, one of my guys are probably out set four or five mm -hmm. because, like, one, they'll, they'll be talking on the phone all day. Yeah. They won't just be sitting there. Because, like, on one of my accounts right now, like, the close is burned. So, like, I'm putting in other solutions, but, like, sort of... How do you, what do you mean by that? The well, the account, like, the pickup rate is 1%. <coughs> okay. And right. it's straight to voicemail. That's how you really know when the account's done, when everything's straight to voicemail. Right. Because that means that Android and iOS have flagged it, which is the last things that happen. Right. So, as soon as Android and iOS flag it, like... So, well. Any... I mean, you can call Huawei phones. I mean... <laughs> But that's about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so anything Android or iOS, it'll immediately go to voicemail. 
Right. And then what they do is it uh, with with uh, with iOS now, it goes to like a live voicemail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see what's on the on the screen. Yeah, and so you can listen to the voicemail live and then decide to pick up or not. Yeah. Yeah. So now no one's picking up. Yeah. Um, but even like you know it's all inbound and those people are asking to be called, but they're not really getting the chance. So it's kind of shitty for everyone. But it's like fair enough because people are abusing the systems, I guess. Yeah. But the the systems are not designed to be used in that way, so then you, you sort of have to abuse them. You know, so it's it's just sort of like a bit of a chicken egg type thing. But it's inter it's interesting. But I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what happens when we get our guys who are already outperforming anyone I've ever seen. You know, 150 book calls a month is insanity. Mm. You know, most of the time these guys are happy with two a day. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like Monday to Friday, my guys are booking eight. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, um, it'll be when they actually get on like a proper dialing system and they're having, instead of 12 conversations a day, they're having 50. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So, uh, that's hammering. Sales snipers picked up. You don't want any more clients. We're not saying to people, throw a hat in the ring. I don't think so. We're very happy. <laughs> it's just not a pitch. No. Is it just the FYI? I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. I, have nothing to say. I think, yeah, I, think I haven't heard Hermosi say that in ages. So I think you're probably, to say now. Yeah, you're probably allowed to say that. His now. last ad was, um, I was very surprised when I saw it. It was quite FTC-ish. Oh, really? Well, it was, um, this is the fastest way to make 10 grand a month. And I was like, is it? Well played, sir. Well played. And so, what you think he's like brushing against the the limits of what's allowed or pushing over i think he he's a big target it I would think be he kicked the door in yeah oh, really yeah i was surprised okay i don't care and i think that what he's probably saying at least he believes is true i mean whether it's true or not i don't know i can't say it's not you'd think that surely somebody is keeping I mean, an eye he, on that I mean, you'd be surprised yeah right okay you know it just sort of depends on the I think what I've learned is that, first of all, you can't be across everything, mm -hmm. right? And um, it depends how many people you have around you that tell you no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Evidently very important. <laughs> like, I mean, fuck. No one tells you no. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know. But I mean, I was surprised, but I mean, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, good for you. Yeah. You know? and, and to be honest, like, I think it'd be interesting because I reckon he'd be the one that fight it. Yeah. Well, he... And also, like, they can't get every... Like, so they sort of have to link it to the business, I think. So if you have, like, 10 businesses, I don't think that they can get everything you have. I I, I, I think. And also, like, if you have pooled investments, they, they can't go after pooled investments because anything they do can't negatively impact people that have nothing to do with it. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, so he... And I'm sure he's fine. He's got all He has that. so much money. I, yeah. I don't, you know... And Let's it's not coming, worry about it's coming Alex. In no, I think Alex would be just fine. I think he's okay without our I think advice. he might have more money than the FTC. I think he'd be, <laughs> you know, when it comes to making money, I think that dude's fucking one of the, one of the goats. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If he's not a billionaire, you know, very soon, I'd be shocked. Yeah. Do you reckon he is and is keeping that under wraps? I mean, it couldn't be that far-fetched, right? Yeah. Although, do you reckon he'd keep it under wraps? Is there much stuff being kept under wraps? I, I feel know. like that'd be a big marketing positive yeah maybe they're waiting for the right time yeah or maybe the target that's on your back like you're a you're a, a much less interesting target with like still striving for that billion not like i got six of them yeah <laughs> oh billions oh yeah i, I got them okay i'd say you'd have to be getting close to it from a net wealth perspective yeah. because i think school is pretty valuable there was um there's that andrew tate thing where he was saying that he wanted to keep it under a billion because that's when they come for you and then, really? yeah, and then just it, couldn't help it. Yeah, it couldn't help it. It's just too just good. wanted that being. I don't hear about Andrew that much anymore. Nah, nah. I the algorithm is working very hard to make sure that happens. I'm sure that you don't hear about him. Yeah, wouldn't you think? Yeah, it's true. Like mostly, what I see of he, like first of all, I don't follow anything that would cause him to come up. In well, he doesn't have any accounts. No, but it used to be. Remember when I was working He's on Twitter. Here, I think that's the only thing he's on. When I was here, Excellent. that was at the peak of Andrew Tate pre being banned and I've never seen his accounts. I've never seen anything of his actual accounts no. come up in my You're feed. Right. It's always the, it's always the the re the content sharers, the yeah. the other people that are making 
his shit. And so, but I've seen less of that. And the majority of what I do see of his come up now is like comedy shit. Like it's, it's ridiculous. You know, like it's, it's not even. He's great. Like his, I think he's, he's got a podcast that him and Tristan do. Yeah. Well, I think that's what they do all day. Is right? They just sit there and just talk in a microphone. Is, though. No, they just talk shit and then it's recorded and people do it. Do this. Yeah. <laughs> Says these two guys. <laughs> All right, I'm, 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 I'm wrapping it up. Oh, that's that's wrap it up. All right, guys. All right, that's it. Another episode. Sweet. Got episode us something. Yeah. I lost track at three. Yeah. Like, rate, all that. And yep. we'll maybe we'll if we if we we'll, if we keep this. going on the if we keep going on the path, maybe we'll be able to do this again at some point. Yeah. In our lives. Yeah. A year or two time. You know, it's funny. I get told all the time, you should really focus on your personal brand. I think it would do really well. And I go, I'd love to. I, I don't think I have it in me. <laughs> I don't care enough about what people think. Yeah. I think you have to really give a fuck. Yeah. It's a tricky one. I don't have any me. But I like yeah. doing this. Yeah, it's fun. If you like it, tell me you like it. If you don't, sh- whatever. Yeah, just yell that down an empty hallway. Yep. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 Screaming as loud as you'd like. <laughs>